Dear Asus, it's been real, but it's over. All right, everybody, so this is, uh, you, you guys have probably seen Steve's videos about all the ongoing drama with the 7800X3D blowing up. Um, Steve's got multiple parts in this video, and it's funny because there's some issues I've been experiencing that are really kind of aligning with some of the issues that he's un unearthed, if you will. Actually, I don't know if Steve has unearthed it as much as Asus just made it super obvious that they are a they are, they are a company that is no longer worthy of our, of allowing them to sponsor us or your money. And my first obligation on this channel is to the consumer. And so what we're gonna do today is I'm just gonna kind of spit out some, some stuff about this, some of my own personal experiences and what the future is gonna look like regarding Asus as being a part of our channel. Uh, so if it seems a little all over the place and discombobulated, then bear with me. This is only the second time I've had to do this in the last almost 11 years now that I've been running this channel. Asus, as you can see, this is only some of the motherboards we've received just since this last launch, technically last two launches. It's a big deal for us to say, hey, uh, keep your stuff. It's a pretty big deal because we rely on a lot of parts sponsorships to do the builds and the videos and the, the how to's and the tutorials and all that sort of stuff. More often than not, we'll receive way more product than we've asked for, which is kind of, as you can see right here, the problem with Asus is the fact that over the last three or four generations, it has been a steady decline in not only quality, but backing their products, RMA experiences for the general consumer, and even our own personal experiences with us getting bad hardware and then terrible support um, in, in handling that bad hardware. So I don't even know where to begin. Right now, <clears throat> Asus has thrown itself off a cliff. It's thrown itself off a cliff when it comes to co consumer confidence. And I'm gonna use that term, consumer confidence. Um, I know that Asus is all about brand strength, like how strong is our brand in the industry? And no one has drugged their name through the dirt more than Asus themselves. The most recent straw that has really broken the camel's back for me to make this decision about not allowing Asus to have any part in our channel moving forward is uh, the latest BIOS revisions that they have created for their X670E boards that are known to be overvolting the SOC on the chips, <clears throat> specifically the X3D chips, ca causing catastrophic failure to both CPUs and motherboards. And this so-called fix, which Steve shows actually doesn't fix it, the problem still persists, void your warranty. So because it is a quote unquote beta, which by the way, if it's not tested, it even says in the language on the BIOS description that it is still in testing and is not officially released. It makes zero sense for a motherboard manufacturer to release a beta BIOS when something this serious is happening. Look, beta BIOS exists and they've existed for a long time for graphics cards as well as motherboards. But typically the beta features that you're dealing with here are maybe USB stability or maybe memory um, QVL updates or maybe like XMP slash Expo updates, that sort of thing, or DOCP, Expo's new to AM5. Not having it literally be a voltage change that can affect literally everything connected to your motherboard in a catastrophic way uh, of, of cascading failure if it goes bad. So to put out a, a BIOS that says this is supposed to fix the problem, we think, we're not sure, we're still testing it. Feel free to try it. Oh, by the way, if you install this in their motherboard, then you absolutely void your warranty and we're no longer responsible for any catastrophic failure that may happen on your board. So it's kind of like they're dangling the, the carrot in front of you saying, hey, this will fix your board, but it also allows you to uh, void your warranty uh, if you don't do the due diligence and read the entire description of the BIOS. So that is, that is so anti-consumer. That is so, we don't stand by our product. That is so, Frick. you as a consumer, all we care about is protecting our bottom dollar, our bottom line. Screw you and your $700 board or $1,200 board, whichever board it is. I mean, this one here, the Crosshair Extreme 670E is a grand. Yeah, this is one that's been blowing up stuff as well, including the board I have in my system, the X670E Crosshair Hero. That's another one. Okay, but that's that's, that's neither here nor there. That's the latest thing. I mean, let's not forget about the capacitor issue being installed backwards on Intel motherboards for the 12th gen, leading to actual burning and potential fire issues. And the quiet, let's protect our brand and not be too noisy about the fact that there's a recall on this, 
when recalls are intended to be loud and heard so everyone knows so none of these accidentally end up in the wild causing some potential serious danger. You guys remember my video about that and how they, they're hiding it all behind Freedom of Information Act. They don't want you to know what they found. They just want you to go away as a customer. So breaking the third wall here, we just rearranged the boards because I had to find the one that I'm about to reference. Anyway. Fourth wall. Third wall, fourth wall, the seventh third, wall. I don't know. The third wall back there. It takes seven boards to get a good one from Asus. Let me explain. <laughs> so when, when I started the Mega Man build, um, I wanted to use a white motherboard because of the fact that Asus has white motherboards. They're, they're not as common, but they do have them. And thank God this all went down the way it did because now I have an MSI board in there. So I'm free and clear from all this crap moving forward. We'll talk about what's in this box in a second because this box was a replacement for something that I had received. So I had requested the ROG Maximus Z790 Apex. And the entire reason for that is the fact that it has, it's a white motherboard. Here it is. Well, it's technically silver, like kind of a metal-y color. So this board, I think would have been perfect for the Mega Man build. Well, do you wanna know what happened when I opened it up? There's an entire row of smash pins at the bottom. An entire row. So of course, I immediately have my, uh, my brand manager who works internally with me here. Um, he's actually the one the board is, the, the, the build is for. So it was, this is his motherboard. I said, yo, get Asus on the phone and ask them, what the frick? I mean, I'm, I'm just like, what the hell? So the explanation was, we're so sorry. And, and I'm not like, I, I'm obviously being dramatic with the tone. They weren't like, we're so sorry. But they were like, oh, we apologize. Cause I was like, how the hell do we receive something like this? We've always received product that's new, right? They were like, we're so sorry. Somehow that particular board was an RMA return. You know how so many RMAs are like void due to smash pins? And there's always been claims of like people assuming that the brands are smashing the pins themselves because they can just void it. Anyway, that's anecdotal and I can't prove it. I, I digress. That board somehow ended up in, a, in, a, in the wrong shelf and it was supposed to be a warrantied slash returned item for recycling, et cetera, et cetera. And it somehow got put into the creator slash influencer stack where we send stuff to influencers when they re request product. And I'm like, okay. That's, that's that's not good, that's not okay, because what if that had ended up in a resale stack? This, this, look, this is the kind of thing that Newegg was also known to do and got in trouble for, was taking back RMAs and known bad product and reselling it again. And then it's, it's just, anyway, moving on. So this was my replacement. This is also, it was a white box that came from China, had China labels, China post crap all over it, DHL, et cetera, et cetera. I open it up and you know what? It's just the board with a random piece of foam in there. <laughs> so moving on. No accessories or anything else that went with it. So fine, this was from an RMA. I now know, okay, the motherboard is not gonna be new at this point. Like they just, and I think this came down to a supply issue because they didn't have enough white ones. This one also has something going on with the socket where I don't know if it's, a bent, I haven't looked at it on the microscope yet. I don't know if it's a bent pin, if there's fuzz in there or something but it's also got scratches and stuff on it. So this is also not a, so this was like the final straw where I basically was like, okay, Asus, we got on the phone again. I'm like, this is not okay. What the hell is going on? And of course, falling all over themselves, apologizing, apologizing. And I feel bad for our rep because it's not her problem. It's not, she's not the one sending us this stuff. She's putting in the orders and then Asus corporate, wherever they are, this was obviously, this one came from Taiwan. This one came from stateside, the original smash pin one. Moving on, I requested another whiteboard and we got a black one. So that's when I finally, and it didn't fit as you guys saw. So that's why I finally moved to MSI. That was our most recent experience. My personal rig, if you guys watch my live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash jace 2 cents my most recent live stream, you guys know I'm running a 7950X 3D and I've got the uh, X670E Crosshair Hero, which is one of the boards that has been identified as blowing up 7800X 3D CPUs. So far, everything's been fine with my 7950X 3D. My voltages all seem to be okay. It seems to be potentially a BIOS issue with the 7800X 3Ds. You guys know I've been having nothing but crazy RAM stability issues. I've updated the BIOS once since all this happened and I haven't touched it again because it's been fairly solid. 
Couple days back, I received, I had a random blue screen. My system had been on all day, no problem. I had a random blue screen. I'm like, that's really odd. So then I turned on the system, went about my day, fired up my live stream. You guys know the second I went live, this happened. Um, camera. <laughs> Where did you go? So while trying, trying to troubleshoot that, I restart the system and my camera comes back, but upon restart, I end up dealing with my GoXLR app kept crashing. Just kept saying could not connect to device. Um, my uh, mouse and keyboard, even though they're wireless, the, the wireless dongles were connecting and disconnecting. I loaded up Audacity because I was trying to modify an audio clip that I was trying to load onto my XLR because I like to play fart and stupid immature sounds. Um, opening up Audacity just put my system into a complete fit. It's erroring all over the place. God, why is it so loud? I didn't touch the system since my last stream. I haven't touched anything. Which led to me having to shut down again and then I ended up reducing my memory clocks again because I was running a custom profile that I had made that was solid and working and it didn't meet the Expo stuff. And you know, on especially X3D CPUs, if you're not running the Expo settings, you are leaving a ton of performance on the table, uh, depending on your resolution. Anyway, upon restarting it, playing and everything was fine until my system sound started crackling and literally going out. And when I say going out, only the game audio went out. Oh, I actually got a kind of- That's a I lost all the game sounds, what happened? How did I lose all the game sounds? I don't know what you're doing to your AMD build, but my AMD build is still working. And I basically was like, guys, I'm being AMD'd right now. And by AMD'd, really Asus'd. Enough is enough. I don't have any confidence in this brand. I don't have any confidence in Asus whatsoever. I think they make a beautiful product. I think the hardware design is absolutely gorgeous. Even their box presentation, if they would put half the effort into making a quality product in terms of its software support, that they do in their hardware, then I wouldn't feel like I have to literally fire one of our sponsors. Now, fortunately, I don't have to refund any money because at the start of this year, they put us through such hassle on even trying to get contracts figured out and agreed upon that we are in May and we still hadn't finalized 2023 yet. And every brand we're working with had already been finalized by January. We start the year prior. So we started these discussions in 2022. We are in May and we still have not been able to solidify anything. So it was very easy to say, Asus, it's been real, but we're, we're done. I will not, I have a cup. I don't think I have any builds right now. No, I don't have any builds right now that are in the, in the works that were involving any Asus product. Yeah, the Mega Man X build, the Mega, I don't know if it's gonna be Mega Man X, but Mega Man build, um, that's MSI. My personal rig at home that having problems with, I've already talked about potentially going back to Intel, not necessarily for AMD's fault, but just, I was in this position where I don't know if a lot of what I'm experiencing is it AMD or is it Asus, but it really is starting to lean that it's Asus because guess what? I have a Tai Chi X670E motherboard from ASRock sitting on my test bed and it has been solid as a ASRock, yes, pun intended, since the moment we used it. And that goes all the way back to our uh, 7950X non-3D review when the 7000 series first launched last year. It has been rock solid. The only reason I didn't use it in my personal build, and I've already said this, is the aesthetics of the Tai Chi don't match what I was going for with my Nebula 2 build with the purple and, and, uh, and blue. I needed an all black board for that to work and that's like brass accents on there. The point is, when you can say that ASRock is more stable and reliable than ASUS, I think that's self-explanatory. Do you know what's happened here? ASRock used to be the avoid the brand at all costs brand, and they didn't like that. They made honest efforts of improving their image and improving their stability and their quality and their build quality. ASUS on the other hand has become so complacent by being a money printing factory through their ROG branding bull stuff that they just rake in the money because by the time you figure out your board is actual garbage, it's too late. And they probably voided your warranty by you doing something that you didn't even notice, which could potentially even be updating your BIOS to fix a problem where it could destroy your CPU. But Asus wants to wash its hands of any sort of liability. So that's why we are washing our hands of any sort of Asus, I guess technically with the exception of his Strix card because 
Yeah, it's unfortunate. The graphics card side has been really solid. The problem is they're all still attached to the same corporate entity that is actual actual garbage. All right, guys, this one, I just wanted to put this out there and let you guys know. You guys have been hitting me up and left and right. Have you seen Steve's video? Have you seen MVC? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I cannot boycott every brand someone has a problem with. I would literally have to sit in the corner with my lights off and never talk or move or touch or anything because guess what? There's not a brand on the planet that doesn't have problems. We don't grade brands on their problems. We, we grade brands on how they handle those problems. I have stood by far too long and given Asus the benefit of the doubt. And it was really the backwards capacity issue that had me starting to waver in my confidence in ASUS, especially the emails that took place afterward. Um, because it it was really a whole lot of like, we can't tell you any of the details. If you want the details, you have to go through the Freedom of Information Act to get those. But we can tell you that we've done stuff. The emails I got regarding my motherboard problem on the 7950X3D that did in fact turn out to be a 100% a motherboard problem because after replacing that board, Everything has been fine with the exception of the memory stuff I've been dealing with. The amount of condescending, well, have you tried this kind of email that was in there? Was like, you know what? Asus is, is so high on their own horse that they, they can't even see the ground anymore. And the thing is, this is an open letter to Asus at this point. We have seen bigger brands than you fail because of the arrogance that exists at that level. So, I suggest you start climbing down the ladder now so you have a softer landing because you're heading down the wrong path. That's all I have to say, guys. You guys expect us to represent and stand up for you guys, and that's what we're doing. Until ASUS has shown us that there is brand confidence that's restored, and it starts with guaranteeing anyone that has a motherboard problem using any piece of software they've ever put out or BIOS on their website ever, you gotta at least start there. The problem as Steve has identified, they can put that BIOS out, have it brick motherboards and then yank it off the site at any time that they want and say, well, you shouldn't have used it. You shouldn't have put it out there and you should have at least half-assed effort into any of this right now. And you don't. And that's why you are officially fired from this channel. But you don't care.